Oh yay, you guys are joining already. This is fun. Oh, you're all on time. This is great. I'm just gonna wait a bit for everyone. Hi, hi. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm just gonna wait a bit for everybody to, hello, uh, tune in. Might take a little bit. Hey Zoe, come. That's my sister, hello. Awesome, hi. Oh, this is great, perfect. Um, I'm just, as I said, gonna wait a little bit of time. So it's a good time for you guys to get yourself sorted. I have. I've got my thing, my cheese board for one. Hopefully I can finish it off. Probably will, to be quite honest. And also, I've got my beer in a wine glass. I don't drink wine, but I want to be fancy like you guys, so cheers. Hmm. Wow, lots of people are tuning in. This is great. Loving all your um, little stories and stuff as well. So good. Um, okay. So, hi everyone. So should I wait a little bit longer or um, might wait another 30 seconds? just in case a few other people are tuning in. It's only 6.01. Oh, love hearts. Thanks, guys. That's really sweet. Hi, Mum. <laughs> hey, thanks for tuning in. Uh, so, want to make sure that you've got everything, for starters. Uh, make sure you've got your tools, your balls, obviously. A couple of balls, hopefully. Um, and if you didn't get any tools, no worries. You can just grab some things from your kitchen drawer. So what I suggest, these are the tools that you should have received in the mail. Mine are a bit dirty because I'm just a bit dirty and I've been using them. So this is one of them. That's going to be really good for joining things. This is another one of them. This is really good for trimming and also um, I mean, really, we're not going to use this one heaps today, but I use that for uh, making little grooves in the clay. And this one as well. So this pointy one. Mm. That's going to be good for scoring, which again is for joining. Now, if you don't have those, that's no worries at all. Hi. Oh, Anriel. Hello. <laughs> um, that's no worries. You can just use... A knife just something pointy we want to be able to kind of really get in there all right and then a small and a large spoon so we're going to use these for joining and this is only if you don't have your tool kits we're just getting real crafty so this gives the same result as this one here so really you can get away with just those. Hi Alice. Cute. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to get started because it's 6.03. Um, now, a lot of you won't have a ruler. If you do, definitely go and grab one because it's going to be super handy. So I'll pop that there. Um, grab your spoons and knives if you don't have your tools also a cloth so you can just use a simple dish cloth um obviously clean because you don't want to get bits of food in your clay that'd be a bit grim wouldn't it so mine's already dirty once again because i've been um, playing with it earlier today so yeah you want it to be relatively clean if you can and pretty big because we're going to be rolling out a slab um but your general dish, dish cloth is going to be really, really handy. Uh, if you've got a rolling pin, you want to go and grab that from your kitchen cupboard as well. Uh, if you don't have a rolling pin, no worries. Just get something that's similar to a rolling pin, like a jar or, you know, something like that. Something you can just really get in there and roll everything out. Rolling pin is ideal though, because it is a bit of it's sweaty work getting in there. Now, 
You don't have to have a spray bottle. I don't expect anyone to have a spray bottle. Mine's quite fancy. Um, just grab a dish with some water in it because you might need, uh, you probably will need a little bit of water. We're gonna be making some slip, which is something that's going to glue our boobs onto our cup. Great. And the areolas onto the boobs. So some technical work, you're gonna need some water. Um, that's probably about it, I reckon, if you've got your bits and pieces. I do wanna show you uh, a boob mug that a student did. It's so good. Her name's Amy. Look at this. How good's that? That's her first mug. She did really well. She's really worried about it. It's excellent, hey? So we're going to be making something pretty similar to that, but you use your um, artistic licensing. Just absolutely go for it. Um, I have made one earlier today. So this is Amy's finished boob mug. This has got a glaze and everything on it. So that's already had um, two firings in the kiln. Uh, so this is a completed mug. She can drink out of that now. Uh, this I have just made today. So this is just, this is mud. This is similar to what yours might look like. Look at those. That's actually to scale. Um, I've decided to put a little handle on there. Uh, and there's a number of different handles that you can do. So you can do kind of like a circular handle if you want, you don't have to. Um, or you can do one of these standard handles as well. But I'll show you all of that later. Um, I went to Bunnings today to buy a light because obviously it's dark here at the moment and I got not an LED one, I got, I don't even know what it is, but it is a thousand degrees. I feel like I'm about to burst into flames. So sorry if I get a little bit sweaty. It's just, you know, we've just got to roll with it because this is the first time I've done this. Oh, Fiona, hello. Hello, my love. Um, all right, so let's get into it. You've got your tools, you've got your bits and pieces. You know, have a little sip. Also, um, have a bit of cheese, you know? This is oh, hungry and thirsty work. Try not to get any uh, crumbs in your clay though, because, oh, there's a buck on there. That's not, that's not ideal. Um, yeah, try not to sprinkle any cl uh, crumbs in the clay because it's not gonna be the best result. Okay. So your ball is going to make more than just the mug. So if you find that you've run out of clay at the end um, of making your mug, your mug's probably giant um, and might be a little bit too big, might be more of a planter vibe, not sure. But you can unwrap your ball if you have a table that you don't want to get dirty, like me, um, then you might want to use a board as well. You can just use a breadboard, um, but it does need to be quite big. Right, so the reason I like to use cloth is because we're doing slab work at the moment. That's one of the three core hand building techniques. Um, so you've got slab work, You've got uh, coiling, uh, and you've also got um, pinch pots. So we're gonna be slabbing our mugs today. And if you wanna learn the other strategies, then um, tune in next uh, fortnight. I'll do a few more of these, depending on who wants to do them. Um, I'm actually gonna move this out of the way for now. And I'm going to lay out this. I'm just gonna chuck my ball on there. You can just really go for it, you know? Now, one thing you're gonna to wanna to make sure of when you're actually rolling this out, we're wanting to roll it in uh, to more of a long rectangular shape because we're gonna be cutting our slabs out of this shape. Um, one thing I didn't tell you before as well is 
the mug that you make, or some, some of you are going rogue, you're making whatever you want, that's great, well done. Uh, but I'm gonna be showing you how to make the specific boob mug. Um, but you can also use this technique for larger planters, um, planter pots as well, um, or just bowls, things like that. So it's pretty versatile. Um, when you're rolling this out, uh, you want to make sure that it is even the entire way around. So you can see that Amy's uh, is really even all of the way around. Um, it can be pretty easy when you're rolling it out to have one edge really thin and one edge really thick. So just be mindful of that when you're rolling it out. And once this gets fired, once your piece gets fired, it's going to shrink around about 20%. So you do want to make it slightly bigger than um, what you actually want it to be as a finished product. So just account for 20%. Sweet. All right. So you've all got your balls, you've semi-flattened them out, uh, and now we're just going to really get in the middle. If you're going to be rolling it out on the side, you're gonna get really thin sides, and that's not ideal as well. So it's gonna be some sweaty work now, guys. We've really, especially with this light beaming in my face, um, but you really want to get into the middle. So this is probably going to take us all just a little while because we want to get it um, to about half a centimetre, um, maybe even a little bit thinner than half a centimetre. Anything, anything thinner than that, um, you're not going to be... Oh, my bug's in the clay. You're not uh, going to be able to stand it up when we're wanting to join it together. So as you can see with this one, we're going to be cutting out a circle um, from when we've actually rolled this out into a slab and we're also going to be cutting out a long rectangle as well to make up the sides of the mug. Um, you will have clay left over to do a handle, boobs, areolas, nipples, the whole lot. It'll be great. And again, if you don't have clay left over, then um, perhaps you've made your mug too giant. I do have measurements um, for the people that want to make a mug pretty similar to that size. Once again, this will reduce 20%. I realize this is quite big. There you go. And you know what? If your boobs are wonky, great. So is everyone's, you know? We want, it, we want there to be a bit of variation. I'd love for you to share it um, if you're confident. I'd love to see what you guys make. So, we'll just roll it out for now. I'll move all of this so I don't ruin everything. And if I'm going too fast ever, just let me know. Tell me to slow down. Because I just, you know, this is the first time I've done an Instagram live video or whatever you call it. I'm also, there's a probably about half the people that bought the online toolkits that um, are not actually able to attend this class. So I'm going to be, I'm kind of recording this as well, I think, um, and we'll send that to them after. So if there's ever a class, a themed class that you want to do, but you can't because you're just, you know, too busy, um, no worries. We'll get that sorted for you. So it's gonna take a little bit of time. And you know what, you can stand up and just really get in there because it's actually quite hard to do. You can also, um, with slabs, you can make some actually really cool um, platters. So this is a platter I made, um, just basically out of rolling a ball um, into a thin sheet. And then I just kind of pinched up the sides so there's so much that you can do with slab work. It's great, it's one of my favorite techniques. So how many do we have? 56, that's cool. All right. If you have any questions as well, just go for it, ask away. I know your hands might be a bit muddy, but it's all right, 
can wipe it off. So mine's still probably, yeah, over a centimeter, I reckon. So you just want to keep on going until you've got a pretty consistent, just under half a centimeter. Can you guys hear me okay? Is the tea towel meant to be wet or dry? Keep it dry. Um, yeah, you don't need to have a wet tea towel for this. It will wick a little bit of moisture out of your clay, but that's okay. It's not gonna wick too much. If I make a mistake slash change my mind later, can I squish all the clay together and start again? Yes, Alice, you can. You absolutely can. Um, but you are going to need a bunch of water if you choose to do that. If you hate what you make, um, no worries. You can squish it all together, but you're going to need water. Every time you handle the clay with your hands, you're drawing moisture out of it. Um, so it'll get a little bit cracked. So you definitely want to make sure you've got a fair bit of water on hand if you're going to do that. And um, also, oh, another question. What's your favorite snack, Shani? <laughs> I love you. What's what's my favourite snack? Um, you, mate. And cheese, except it doesn't go down too well with my gut. Wait, what's that? I didn't um, get any clay, but just eating my dinner, watching like a freak, chewing you on. Oh, I love you, mate. Excellent. Thank you so much. Um, all right. Loving the playlist. Oh, Jesse, yes, well done. So there is a playlist that I actually made. It's quite good and we can listen as a family. I can't listen right now um, because it's gonna muck up the sound, but you guys can. Uh, so it is mud.clayplay on Spotify and it's the Mud Fridays playlist and it's an absolute banger, all right? You're all gonna love it. Um, what have we got? Um, we didn't have a rolling pin, but we're using our bottle of Fino. Hope it works just as good. It absolutely will. Oh, everyone's here. Great result. Um, yeah, it will. And you know what? As I said, if it's a bit wonky, who cares? Look at that sweat. That's from that light. It was only $29.95. That'll teach me. I should have gone the $59.95. What a fool. All right. I mean, I'm still going. How are you guys going? Um, great answer. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. Oof. So, and once it starts to get thinner, as I said, really make sure that you're, that you're just checking that both of your edges, all of your edges are really quite even because, you know, we don't want it to blow up in the kiln. I'll tell you a story. Um, I used to do clay work with um, at a rehab in the Gold Coast hinterland, and uh, it was 90% males um, over 30. And um, you know, I'm like, oh guys, I'm going to do clay. It's going to be great. I'm going to do it every Friday. I'm like, why? We're not. We're not coming. Why the fuck would we want to do clay? Um, anyway, they came because what else is there to do at a rehab? And they absolutely loved it. One of the boys actually um, is a potter now. Um, better than me, way better than me. As soon as he started, he was better than me. It was a bit grim. Um, but one of his uh, vessels, they were huge, um, huge, huge vases that he would make. And... Uh, I went to Picasso's Ceramics to see Brad um, to get it fired. Well, a bunch of them fired. And when I came back, um, you know, one was broken, like completely broken. And I was quite put out, um, really, really defensive of my students' work. And I was just like, um, excuse me, uh, did somebody drop this? And the response I got was, oh, no, actually, that had air bubbles in it, so it blew up in the kiln and it ruined other people's work. So, you know, the story behind that is don't have air bubbles in your work and don't have the clay too thin because otherwise it'll blow up and ruin other people's work and it's very embarrassing. All right, so I reckon we should all nearly be there now. 
Yeah, I'm pretty good. How are you guys going? Hi everyone. Well, we got another question. Most intense pregnancy workout. <laughs> Engage the core and roll. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, Sig. I'm so sorry, that poor baby. But yeah, it is a pretty intense workout. I don't know about you guys, but I am a sweaty Betty. All right. But I reckon I'm pretty good. I reckon I'm pretty good. So, um, once again, if you want to make uh, something a similar size to this one, and if you have a ruler, which unless you're like a school teacher or me, you probably don't. But if you do, um, we're going to be rolling out a rectangle that's around 27.5 to 28 centimetres. So about that size. If you don't have a ruler, don't worry, I thought about you guys. If you do have one of these, it is one hole of those and about that far down. So we're talking about that much of one of these tools. Um, but once again, these wogs are, these wogs, uh, mugs are really wonky. So that's what we want to go for, okay? Um, all right. So to start off with, um, I'm going to actually use this to trace. Um, the diameter of this is 9.5 centimeters. So 9.5 with your ruler. Once again, if you don't have a ruler, you can just see that it's about just under halfway down this tool here. What have we got? Yes, yes, mum, thanks for paying me out. Very good. 27.5 width or length? Great question, length. So 27.5 length. It doesn't really matter what width you're gonna have because that's gonna be how um, tall the mug is. You wanna make sure that it's not like that tall because you're gonna get no coffee in that. But um, some people are going to want a little bit shorter mugs. Some people are going to want bigger. Just depends on how much coffee you drink, really. Um, Okie dokie. Can I have a thumbs up if people have rolled out their um, rolled out their slab? We've got another question. Um, what was the length? Okay, no worries, JJ. So the length of the rectangle is about 27.5 centimeters to 28 centimeters. Awesome, thanks guys. Um, so that is the length of our rectangle and the width is just however um, high you want your mug to be. Um, keeping in mind though, awesome, thanks guys. Keeping in mind though that um, you it's gonna reduce 20%. Okay, so you wanna make sure that you're making it high enough. Awesome. What have we got? Oh, thanks Lucy. That's a beautiful emoji, love you. Um, so to cut, you can use this one, um, or if you have a knife, you can use that, of course. Um, it should be really quite easy to cut your clay. So what have we got? Okay. So I'm never too precious when I'm cutting this stuff. You want to make it um, as even as what you can, but I mean, no one's going to die. So just go for it, you know? Now, how tall have I made mine? Um... About 11 and a half centimetres tall. That might be too tall. It's way too tall, in fact. Might shave a bit off of that. Just because I can. Um, what does that say? Still slightly fixing thickness. Okay, no worries. I reckon some people might be um, fixing the thickness a little bit, so not a worry. With your excess clay, this is what you're going to be using for um, your base, your circle, 
as well as your handle if you're going to have a handle and also obviously your boobs. So what we want to do here is pull that off and press it all together, making sure that again there aren't any air bubbles in it and we'll roll that out again in a second. So. So yeah, my thickness is probably, it's actually my thickness, um, I've been a bit naughty, my thickness is a little bit over um, half a centimetre, but you know, oh well, I'm just going to go with it. And we'll do the 27 and a half. Alright, how are people, um, is that strip you've cut the O bit of cup hard to explain without top or bottom side of cup? Hmm, is that strip you have cut um, the O bit? No. So I haven't, I haven't cut the circle yet. We're going to cut the circle um, in a little bit. And if you don't have um, a measuring apparatus uh, to measure a 9.5 centimeter diameter, then you know what you can do is you can actually just use your strip and you can fold that into a cylinder and you can use this to trace your circle. So don't worry. We're going to do this together and it'll be fine. Um, can I get a thumbs up? What, we, what else have we got? Um, what did um, trim the height of your cup to? So if you want to, um, oh, yours is a bit thick as well. No worries. If it's a bit thick, just if it's too thick, um, roll it out a little bit more and recut it. Um, but if it's, if it's okay, like mine, mine's a little bit thick, but it's okay. Uh, so I'm going to go with that, um, but if you want to trim, so it should look something like that. That's your slab, okay? See, that's a bit thick. I've been a bit naughty, uh, but that's your slab there. Um, and now we'll have a break and just have, have a drink. Oh, there's a bug. Yuck. Get that out. See, that's, that's the perils of doing it outside in, in your workshop. Okay, so um, what did trim the height of your cup? So the height of my cup is around about 10 centimetres. Um, that's going to be approximately that height. And if you want to trim the height, you're just using um, a knife or you're using this tool here. It's just easier to um, cut it. Um, sorry, a bit late to the live story, but I have a big slab of clay that I'm using. How much should I cut off the slab? All right, if you've got a big slab, you wanna cut off about a kilo, so about um, this much. Um, when you cup your hands and then you want to roll it out um, onto your table um, but onto a cloth and then you want to be cutting a slab that's like this so can I have a thumbs up of people that have cut their slab because I don't want to go too fast for people you've got bucks as well me too um, can you show us how thick it is again? Absolutely. So we've got uh, the length and the width, and then we've got the thickness there. Just remember this is actually a bit thick. So this is just over um, half a centimeter. 
and you want to make sure that it's probably a little bit skinnier than that. Um, nice one, Alice. Thank you. Tia, you're sorted. Awesome. Great. Uh, also, as I mentioned earlier, these are, I think I'm filming this, so if anyone wants to do it later or um, can't do it now, that's so fine. I'll send it to you um, and you can do it in your own time. The reason I like to do um, it live is because I feel like we're all doing it as a family and that's nice and I can interact with you guys so it feels like we're all doing it together and that's the point. I've got another bug. Get out of it. Um, all right. Might be long, but I like big mugs. Me too, me too. All right, so we're just gonna put this one to the side now if everybody has done that. Um, I'm gonna keep on going relatively slowly so that people can catch up that are tuning in a bit late. So eat your cheese, sort yourself out. Now, with um, your piece that's left over, oh, a little bit longer. Okay, Teddy. <laughs> Thanks, mate. Um, okay, cool. So I'll just wait a little bit longer for people um, to get sorted. Does anybody need to see the length of it again or are you all okay? I'm sorting, you're sorting yourself out. I'm so glad. My clay stuck to the table. Oh, honey. All right. So to make sure your clay doesn't stick to the table, that's actually why you're using this. So you can just use a pillowcase cover or a dishcloth. Um, that's going to be really handy to make sure that your clay doesn't stick to the table or the board. Um, okay. But yes, I've had uh, my clay stick to the board many a times and it's super frustrating when you've, you know, rolled out a perfect, perfect slab. So it's a bit grim. All right, has everyone still got some wine slash beer slash kombucha left? I hope so. Whilst we're waiting um, for a couple of people to catch up, if you can grab a little, um, just a little dish, we're gonna make what's called some slip. Uh, so this is the really wet clay that is going to stick everything together. Um, it's gonna stick our boobs to our mug. So if we're going to make some slip, I mean, we're not going to need a huge amount of it. It's just going to stick our sides together and things like that. You might want about that much. Chuck it in your bowl like that. And then you want to put a bunch of water in it because we really actually want to make kind of a paste. Um, so I'm just going to use this and you just mash it into a paste basically. It'll take a little while for it to um, combine with the water. So we'll just do that together. It's a bit awkward, but that's okay. So once again, this is our glue. It's going to make sure everything sticks. Uh, if for example, I was to stick these two pieces of clay together like that and put it in the kiln, it would basically fall apart. We need to make the edges really porous um, to actually lock together. And we also need to use, sometimes I don't use the glue because I'm a bit sneaky, but we also, it's better to use the, the glue, the slip. Um, and then you kind of, especially with handles and stuff like that, the amount of time that handles have fallen off, let me tell you, you definitely want to use a slip for that sort of thing. It's really going to make sure that everything is basically glued together. So right now we're working with mud just from the earth. Uh, and this is actually a BRT uh, what's called a stoneware. So we're going to be turning it to stone, basically, with two firings. Your first firing is your biscuit firing or your bisque firing. And then after the bisque firing, you would glaze your mug or whatever you've made. My favorite 
is a uh, white speckle gloss glaze. And so that's just this glaze here where all of the little freckles come through from the clay. Um, I love that. But you can really get um, whatever colour you fancy. All right. So that's a pretty good um, slip if you guys have made that. Can I grab a thumbs up for the people that have made the slip? Do you have to glaze? No, you don't have to glaze if you don't want to. Um, you can just do, you do need to fire it if you want to use it. So if you glaze it, like in here is actually a clear glaze um, and that allows you to have uh, water in it. Um, and things like that. But if you turn it to stone, you can still have water in it, that's fine. You'll still get a beautiful um, fleck, you can see there. All there, it's really lovely. Uh, without glazing it. So you, if you wanted to, could just do the bisque firing um, and that's it. But what the double firing does do is it creates more of that freckle fleck look uh, because you've had it in the oven for longer, basically. Um, I think I put too much clay in my bowl towel. <laughs> you can never have too much clay in your bowl to you. That's all right. That's okay. How much did you put in? That's really all you need. But you're, you're actually going to have extra clay left over. So don't even worry about it. Don't freak out. All right. Let's press on. So now what we want to do is we want to create the base of our mug. So this circle here. Um, as I mentioned before, it's a 9.5 centimeter diameter for this slab that we've made, this 27.5 centimeter slab that we've made. Okay. Um, how can we fire it from home? I think, yep, that's a great question. So uh, all of you should have received an email from me. If you haven't, it might be in your junk um, or it's really strange if you haven't received it. I can send it to you, just let me know. Uh, it has um, all of your aftercare details for your mugs, so you know exactly what to do. Um, part of that is uh, a detail for you to hop on the website to see the closest kiln to you listed by state. That is underneath, so if you go into the toolkits tab, that's at the bottom. Um, you'll be able to see the kilns listed by state that are near you. They're by no means all of the kilns in Australia. They're just the ones that we know of and um, building the list uh, every day. Um, how th thick is the paste? Um, about that thick. So I'll just show you. Just like that, almost like a butter or something like that, or a clay mask or something like that. I mean, I suppose you could use this as a clay mask, might be a bit gristly, but. So around about that thickness, cause we're just gonna be using it to stick things together, that's all. This is not fancy at all. You're not gonna see it, it's just the glue. Um, do you have to pay for the kiln? You do have to pay for the kiln, but it's very, very cheap. So for example, if I was to take this to Picasso's ceramics, it would cost me $4 um, to fire. $4 for a cup at Picasso's in Burley to fire. Brad's excellent, very, very cheap. Um, yep, great. All right, so what we're gonna do now is we're going to roll this out again. And we're gonna roll it out to about the same thickness as what we had earlier. Oh no, sorry little bug, get out of there. All right. So we just wanna do our base. So as I mentioned before, uh, very cheap for one item. Yes, you're absolutely right. Very cheap for one item. 
Um, as I mentioned before, it's a nine, approximately, don't quote me on that, um, but it's about a 9.5 centimeter diameter. Um, is that all the offcuts rolled into a ball first? Yeah, pretty much, except for these ones. Um, I've got these ones sitting over here. I might use these for a handle or my boobs. Um, but yeah, these are a bunch of the offcuts just rolled into a ball and then rolled out uh, so that I can actually cut out my base. Rolling will get rid of a lot of air bubbles, but you want to be actually uh, manipulating that with your hands and pressing out the air bubbles. Um, but the rolling will get out a lot of air bubbles. You shouldn't be too worried about air bubbles with slab work. It's more when you're doing coiling um, and pinch pots that it gets a bit grim. But I'll show you that later in another tutorial if you tune in again. So again, this is about 9.5 centimeters. If you're lucky enough to have something that you can trace around, that's great. Uh, if you're not, don't worry about it. Just grab your slab, grab your slab, and you can actually just manipulate that into a cylinder and make it as circular as what you can. Um, yep. Is that all of the... Yep, yep. Okay, great. Make it as cylindrical as you can. And then what you can do once you're happy with um, how circular it is on the bottom, you can use this tool and just carefully trace around it. Um, really carefully trace around that so that uh, it's the right size. And again, we're making wonky mugs, guys, so it doesn't need to be perfect. How thick is the base? Great question. It's the same thickness as uh, what you have made your cylinder. So same thickness. Um, again, your cup's not going to die if it's like a mill out. Doesn't matter. You just want it to have a pretty um, consistent. You just want it to be pretty consistent all the way around. Just for when it's cooking in the oven. So you can see here, I've got my circle. You're such a great teacher. Thanks, great. Well, great feedback. I'm um, better live in person because I can actually tutor people when we're doing the Mud Fridays Hangouts. It's a lot of fun. Um, so this is very different for me. So I'm glad and I hope I'm not going too fast. So again, you've got your circle. This is your base. Do you cut around the outside of your cylinder? Yes, you do. So you wanna cut around the outside of your cylinder if you are using your cylinder to actually um, figure out how big you're making your base. And it's really not a bad idea to use your cylinder because then you're making sure that it's at, it fits it perfectly. Um, really keen to do this in human form. <laughs> Me too. Oh, I wonder when that's going to happen. Hopefully soon. We'll see. Um, can I grab a thumbs up when people have actually cut out their um, circle, their base, and when you've cut out your cylinder, so when you've got both of those things, and I actually haven't joined this properly, by the way. So, you know, we're going to do that together in a second. Sweet. Now I'm gonna actually make sure that my cylinder fits my base properly. Sweet, you guys are good, awesome. Because I might need to trim mine just slightly. And I do, I need to trim mine a little bit. Um, which is good because then I can show you guys how to trim it, which it's, you know, not very technical, let me tell you. 
Um, so I'm just going to be using my knife or my this tool here to do the cutting, making sure that it sits. So what I want you guys to do now is just to make sure that your cylinder fits your circle um, and we want if anything you don't want any overhang of the cylinder this way it's it's better if your circle is like a mil bigger than your cylinder much better that way so I'm actually just going to trim this as you can see uh, mine is a little bit too big so I'm just going to trim that down now. And I'm certain that there's a fancier way to do this, but I don't care. I'm not fancy. We're just going to do it like that. Cool. Yeah, you guys are all good. That's great. Perfect. All right. So if you have, if you've got one end that's slightly higher, um, one end that's slightly higher than another end, just use your knife to slice it off. That's all you've got to do. Don't be shy. Okay, once again, we still haven't joined this yet. We're just making sure that everything is uh, the size that we need it to be. So now what we're gonna be doing You'll need, if you have your toolkit, you'll need your scoring device. If you don't have your toolkit, no worries, you'll just need your knife. Um, that's what we're going to use to actually create the porous surface on all of the edges so we can stick it together. Um, and everyone have a little drink. Maybe even a bit of cheese. Go for it. All right. So I'm just going to separate these now so that I can properly connect them. So I'm going to connect my cylinder first before I connect the cylinder to the base. The way I do that is these two edges here, I'm gonna be scoring them. Uh, and what that means is I'm just gonna be creating a rough surface on either edge. You don't have to make it pretty at all because nobody's gonna see it. It's just to join them like that um, a part of my rectangle broke how do I fix this that's okay so if your rectangle tears or breaks you're working with clay so it's really easy uh, to actually reattach it for example pretend um, this is my rectangle not a very good rectangle but pretend this is my rectangle what I want to do to rejoin it is I want to just score, score, that's scoring. It's not a very good scoring, but I'm just making uh, the edge porous. And then I would want to score this edge as well. I want to make both the edges porous, maybe even a little bit on the side if you've torn it. Use a little bit of slip if you want to. Your slip, once again, is a little paste that you made, your little butter, clay butter, whatever you want to call it. And then you can join these together, back together. So again, this is if you've torn it. Then you can use this and you can actually just join it back together. Just like that. So you see that's made it um, quite rough there I can just use my finger to smooth that over again you want to do that on both edges if it's torn as well you want to just make sure you've done that on both edges and then you're golden you're fine no need to get upset um, I use a fork it works really well that's awesome great love your work yeah a fork would work really well actually it'd work great and probably quicker awesome Thank you, Blue Clay by Carl Ludwig. Thank you so much. I'm getting um, uh, bugs absolutely everywhere. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to score the edges. Again, I might just do a bit of a cross hatch, 
all across hatch ears is I'm going one way and then I'm going the opposite way. I'm going to do uh, it on both edges once again. You can't just do it on one edge and then not the other because we want those edges to lock together. Now this is where your slip comes in. So once again, your slip is uh, the little butter that you made earlier. So you can grab this or your finger, whatever. Just grab a bit of your slip like that. And then you can kind of just run it along. You don't need a ridiculous amount, but you can just run it along the edge, just one edge of your rectangle that we're about to make into a cylinder. So you can see there, I've just got a little bit of slip. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to join these together. So the way that I'm actually properly going to join these together is I'm going to use this tool here, this edge just here. Uh, you can use your spoon if you don't have um, if you don't have this you can use your spoon to do this or you can use your finger um, whatever works doesn't matter you're just gonna make sure you're joining it together so as you can see here hopefully you can see um, is it the same as vinegar I find it works really well um, is the slip the same as vinegar no, the slip that we've made is just a um, just a clay and water um, down into a paste. But I've never used vinegar before. That's quite cool. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start to join these. And I might use a bit of a crosshatch motion when I'm doing that as well. really normal for um, it to be a little bit messy. Once you've done that, that's absolutely fine. Um, you can again smooth that over with your hand, but just really make sure that you have properly joined that and there's not a crack running down here. You also want to do that on your inner edge here. So you can see here on the inside, I still haven't joined that properly. You want to use the same motion, the same kind of crosshatch tactic to be able to join the inner part there. Very fragile, does that mean too thin? Um, you just want to be careful. You just want to be careful and you want to, I'm picking it up now, don't pick it up, just, just leave it on your um, table and just make sure that you're being really gentle with it. Um, do you do it on the inside as well? Yes, you do do it on the inside as well. That's exactly what I'm about to do now. You wanna make sure that you're joining it. When you're, when you're pr pressing from the inner outward, you wanna make sure you're just putting your hand there, especially if you've got a thin wall. So you want to put your hand there just so you're not actually damaging the shape. Once again, and you can use a bit of an upward motion as well just to smooth it out. Again, you can smooth it out with your hands too. And I might just do the outer again here. and then smooth it over with my hand. So once again, I don't recommend picking it up and playing around with it, especially if you feel like your walls are quite thin. My walls are a little bit too thick, um, but your walls are probably actually a lot better than mine. So if you're picking it up and fiddling around with it, it's gonna be hard for you to maintain the cylinder. So just keep it on your table 
and do the joining work from there. Can I grab a thumbs up from people that have joined their cylinder? I'll just show you as well here. Um, the edges all around here, I'm going to need to soften. When you, what I mean by soften is just make sure they're not as sharp. And I can do that by using a little bit of water on my finger. Um, awesome, great guys. Um, the reason I want to do that is if I fire it like this, the edges are going to be really sharp. It's going to be a bit grim for me too. I don't want to cut my face, you know, when I'm trying to drink my morning coffee. So you want to make sure that these are actually um, quite soft. You can see here, these are really quite soft. Amy's made sure that she's used her finger to just trace around here the inner and the outer to make sure it's not too harsh on the lip. Um, I feel like it just looks like it's joined. <laughs> like joined on the outside, yep. So it is, um, at the moment, this is mud once again. So you wanna make sure that you are cross hatching and joining it, um, but if you pulled it, it would rip apart because it is mud. So you do want to be a little bit delicate with what you're doing. Um, not very well joined. Mine keeps cracking apart. Okay, whereabouts, is it just cracking on the join that you're trying to make? Or is the whole thing cracking apart? Yep, just on the join. Okay. So, um, have you, what I'd do is I'd just take it apart again. I'd make sure I scored it really roughly on both edges of the join. I'd grab a bit more of this. If you've got heaps of this in there already, that might be why it's cracking apart. So just make sure you, you've only got um, just a little bit of clay butter lining your edge and then um, reattach it. And once again, just do like here, the cross hatching motion. So I'm pulling this clay over here like this. And then I'm going the other way and pulling that the other way. And I'm kind of just doing this until I'm happy with that join. So I'm pulling clay from over here all the way over there and I'm pulling clay from over here all the way over there. Okay. Right. So just keep on doing that until you're happy, making sure that you're pulling enough clay over so it is actually joining. And then don't worry about how um, rough it is here. Just smooth that out with your, um, with your finger when you're ready. This is the funniest create any activity ever. <laughs> awesome. I'm so glad you're having a laugh. I mean, it is quite funny when you fuck things up a little bit, um, but it can be frustrating as well, so I can appreciate that. Um, okay, you think it's too thin. All right, if it's too thin, all you wanna do is just um, go again. If I bake a small bug into my pot, is it going to explode in the kiln and destroy everything? <laughs> if it's a really small bug, um, I don't think it's going to create an air bubble. Rip bug. Um, so um, if anybody's, if you feel like it's too thin and way too flimsy, don't worry. Just do it again. Start again. You're all good. Um, you want to just roll it into a ball again. Um, so, you know, rolling all your bits into a ball once again, just like this. I know it's frustrating to have to start again, but we're all in this together. And it won't take you that long, especially now you know what you're doing. Um, and just pace it out. Because again, this is being filmed. So um, you can just go at your own pace and you can watch it back um, if you need to. That's no 